Civil rights have been abused and violated for centuries. I could go on and on about how many groups have been abused because of their beliefs, ancestry, and physical traits. However, I will tell you about a group that is being oppressed that you have never heard of. Psychologists once considered that slaves who attempted to escape were mentally ill, as were women who wanted to wear pants. Today, in our enlightened modern era, these two may seem silly, and anyone who would support them is just as ridiculous. Therefore, what I'm about to tell you is also considered a mental disorder. It is called Cotard's Syndrome. In fact, Academia.edu articles go so far as to describe it as a disconnect from cognitive reality. This is terribly crude and insensitive. If they said this about the LGBT community, any academic that posted it would be ostracized from civilized society. Unfortunately, Cotard's is so underreported that I could find almost no images depicting the physical and psychological mistreatment of this particular portion of society. Anyways, I just wanted to make a few more people aware that this is a very real and pressing issue, and then perhaps we can make a difference. Let's see. I know that I'm forgetting something. Oh, right! I forgot to explain exactly what Cotard's Syndrome is. It is a state of mind in which one either believes that he has no internal organs or is dead. There is no need to rewind the video. You heard me correctly. People with Cotard's Syndrome are under the belief that they are actually dead. Like the marginalized LGBT community, who should be treated the way that they identify. People with Cotard's Syndrome should be treated the way that they identify. A woman who identifies as a man should be able to use the showers at her local gym without prejudice, just as a boy who identifies as a girl should be able to use the girl's locker room before gym. We need to treat people with Cotard Syndrome exactly how they identify. Since they identify as dead, that is where we need to start. How exactly do you do that? Let's compare it to the LGBT community to find out. Since physical evidence of a person's gender is homophobic, we clearly cannot use that. In the same way, it is insensitive to insist that a person is alive when they clearly know that they are not. Second, you bring the person to a mortician to have their body prepared for burial. Then the person is put six feet under, although technically places like Louisiana sometimes bury their dead above ground, but that is another issue. In the same way, you would allow someone to use the restroom with someone associates. You allow someone to use the grave that they associate with may be saying that I am unfair. I do not think so. Let me give you a quick lesson in biology. For those of you who passed 8th grade biology, you can skip ahead a bit. Sex is controlled by chromosomes. As you may know, all of us have 46 chromosomes, 23 from mom and 23 from dad. There are circumstances in which a person has three chromosomes rather than two, but that is another issue altogether. Now the first 22 pairs are called autosomal chromosomes, and they control the general physical characteristics of what you or I will look like. Everything from blood type to eye color is here. The last pair are called the sex chromosomes, and they control gender-specific traits. Men have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, either of which can be passed on to the child. Women, however, have two X chromosomes. As a result, the combination of these makes you who you are. Now let's look at the expression of traits. As you all know, our physical characteristics are controlled by DNA. Each gene on DNA can either be expressed as a dominant trait or a recessive trait. Dominant overshadows recessive. We saw this basic principle in Mendel's peas. Let us look at an example. Let's say that the trait for being tall is dominant and being short is recessive. Both of your parents are tall, so will you because the recessive trait is not present. The reverse is also true. If both of your parents were short, you will be as well. If your mother is tall and your father is not, you will be tall because the dominant tall gene overshadows the recessive short gene. Skin color is also controlled genetically. 
There are three genes that control skin color. If we put this onto a matrix, it would look something like this. Obviously, there is repetition and skin color is not the only factor that affects what we know as race, but it will do for the present. Now I want you to look at these three individuals. Adam was born white, but identifies as Native American. Despite all scientific and empirical data to the contrary, he should therefore obtain all the rights and privileges that come with this, such as free tuition. Brian was born male, but identifies as female. Despite all the scientific and empirical evidence to the contrary, he should be allowed to use the girls' locker room to oogle and gawk to his heart's content. Cody has Cotard syndrome and thus identifies as dead and should receive all the treatments as such. Sensible people would see that there is something wrong here. Just because you believe you are something else does not make it true. I could call myself Benjamin Franklin, Trey Gowdy, or Mordecai, but that would not change who I was. The left claims to be the party of science and say that the right is not. This is because the left believes in global warming and evolution. Both of these have one thing in common. They are based on looking at small changes and then tell us what will happen in 100 years or millions of years prior. However, when it comes to physical evidence that we can see right here, right now, it takes a lot of ignorance to look at DNA, the single most infallible piece of forensic evidence, and just throw it out because someone is confused and needs psychiatric help. The left is not the party of science, at least not anymore. If there is a teenager that is questioning his identity and feels overly feminine, send him to a gynecologist and he will be able to answer all of the kid's questions. In the same way, you would take someone with cotards to a mortician to have him ensure that the person is not dead. Science uses facts. Liberals are using emotions and feelings to determine right or wrong. For those of you that did not turn me off already, I want to know your opinions. Just go to the comments section and let me know if I am completely off my rocker or if I am right on. If you actually liked this video, be sure to subscribe for more. If you would rather watch a video of something more peaceful instead, you can pray the litany of humility by clicking here. Or you can see the Joker's ability to survive anything by clicking right here.